But we want to look at uh, King David here in chapter 19, verse 11. We'll find where King Saul has decided he wanted to kill David. All right? Um, I mean, he, he, for whatever reason, he decided he's going to kill him. And he sa it says in verse 11, it starts out, Saul also sent messengers unto David's house to watch him and to what? Slay him, Slay him in the morning. And Michal, David's wife, told him, saying, If thou save not thy life tonight, tomorrow thou shalt be slain. So she was in on this with him. Michal was his wife, which is Saul's daughter, right? And so she kind of hit him, made a lump in the bed, you know, and put some uh, goat hair there and all this and told him, he was, told him that, he, that he was sick. <laughs> so they went back to Saul and, and she let him out the window this time and he took off running, of course, and went back to Saul and Saul says, uh, you know, go get his bed and carry him here. Because in verse 15 says that I may slay him. He was determined to kill David. And then he went to Michal, his daughter, and said, why have you betrayed me? And Michal basically said that uh, he said he was going to kill me, right? That's what she said. So we, got, we come on down in verse 18. So David fled and escaped and came to, to Samuel. In, to, what is that word? Rama, yeah, Rama. And told him all that Saul had done to him, and he and he and Samuel went and dwelt in Naoth. Okay. And then Samuel was told that David and uh, was in Naoth and Raham, Ram, and this place, Naoth, is have y'all anybody ever studied this or checked it out what this was? See, Samuel, he, 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 was the, he was still prophet. He was teaching people, okay, about the Lord. And he had a, pretty much what most people believe, this was a place where he had a school where he was teaching other people about prophecy, about, about the Word of God, okay? And if you'll remember back in, on over, I think back in chapter 10, when, when Samuel anointed King Saul, Okay? When he first anointed him, you remember where he told him to go? This same place. <laughs> it's in chapter, read here. He calls it something pretty good here. Uh, chapter 10. Right here. Verse uh, 5, chapter 10 says, After that thou shalt come to the hill of God, where is the garrison of the fierce Philistine. Okay, and this is the same place that he's telling, that he's, they ran off to here. And this is the same place where, if you read on down, verse 9, it says, God gave him, talking Saul, another heart. So, Saul was familiar with this place. King Saul was. And David had, and Samuel was dwelling in this place, maybe thinking that, you know, Saul wouldn't bother him here. But God moves in a mighty way in this area. And we're going to get to, we're getting to something here in a minute, okay? Because Saul doesn't go there first himself. In verse 20, he tells and Saul sent messengers to take David. In other words, he sent so armed soldiers, okay? And when they saw the company of the prophets, think about this school, right, on a hill, prophesying, and Samuel, prophet Samuel, right, standing as appointed over them, right? He's one teaching them. Okay, here's what happened. And the Spirit of God was upon the messengers of Saul. And they all also prophesied. In other words, the Spirit of God came upon them so greatly 
But they couldn't do nothing else. They couldn't get David. They couldn't do anything but be in the spirit. All right? You get in this picture how the spirit of God just come upon them? You know how, well, it tells you how much here in a minute. I'll get ahead of myself. All right. All right. So, verse 21. And when it was told Saul, see, Saul still didn't go himself, he sent other messengers. And they prophet, they got there, guess what happened to them? They prophesied likewise. <laughs> Are you seeing it? And Saul sent messengers again the third time. And they prophesied also. The Spirit of the Lord just come upon them. They, didn't, they couldn't slay David. You see what God was doing? Then when he also, he who? Saul. Also to Ram and came to a great wall, a well, yeah, great well that is in, yeah. And he asked and said, where, was, where are Samuel and David? So he, he hadn't got to this place yet, okay? And one said, Behold, they are in Naoth and Ram. So, and he went thither to Naoth and Ram. And, uh, get this now. And the Spirit of God was upon him also, before he even got to it. <laughs> and he went on and prophesied until he came to Naoth and Ram. See, I mean, he didn't even get there. And the Spirit of the Lord got a hold of him. And you've got to remember that this is somebody that here just before this had killed the prophets of God. But the Spirit of God still came upon him. And, and he stripped off his clothes also. Just these kingly outer garments is what he's talking about. And prophesied before Samuel in like manner and lay down naked all that night and all, all that day and all that night, wherefore they say, is Saul also among the prophets? And read on down verse 20, chapter 20, and David fled from, it gave David a chance to, to run away from Saul. See? So see, David was there with Samuel, and those, they was coming to kill David, but because of the Spirit of God, all they could do was worship God <laughs> and praise God. So, so what did God do for David then? Saved his life, didn't he? Even those who, I mean, Saul wasn't where he needed to be with the Lord, but still the Spirit of God came upon him. Can you remember an old king in Egypt? that Moses went down to? What did God do to that king's heart? Yeah, he would, he would soften it, wouldn't he? And then he'd turn around and harden it. <laughs> he was getting ready to let him loose, and then he'll turn around and harden his heart, and he said, no, you ain't going. Time and time again, he did that. God did that to that old Egyptian king that worshipped all kinds of gods. Yeah, right? So see, can God move, still do that in people's lives? He can still harden somebody's heart or he can still soften hearts. He's God. He hasn't lost that power. So see, your enemies that come against you, God can still stop them if he wants. He can still stop the enemies or whatever that comes against you if he wants to. Anybody still believe that can happen today? If he can do it for David, you think he loves David more than he loves you? No, he don't love him no more than he loves you. He can still move in our life. Hey Amen. why do we get so fearful then sometimes? Why are we so afraid? When God can change the very heart of a man or a woman, if he wants to. <laughs> he can do that. But here's what here's what I'm gonna get to though. That was just that didn't cost you nothing. Amen. Here's what I'm gonna get to. Amen. 
First, when David first fled, he ran to the priest and got Goliath's sword and some bread, right? And because of that, King Saul killed all the, all the priests there. I remember that. Okay. Then he went from there to Samuel. He ran to the man of God. The one that had anointed him when he was a young man. He ran to God. How many people you know run to God? Where's the best place to run to? Is to God. Amen. Is to run to God. I mean, David was running for his very life. And he ran to the place of God. And God protected him. And then God is... We read later that God does order David's steps in different places and this, and he still protects him. But what you've got to see is that all these times when David, even when, uh, what was the place they destroyed? Zegleg or something like that. Uh, destroyed his family, burnt the village and took his wife and all that. Yes, yeah, Zegleg. And David still went to the Lord. All this time he went to the Lord. Even when he numbered Israel and he seen the angel with the sword, who did he go to? And cried out to the Lord. He went to the Lord, didn't he? You know the one time he didn't go to the Lord for a long time? That's when he messed up with Bathsheba. The Lord had to go to him. <laughs> right? Yeah, and they, did, who, did, did David find, did he go to the Lord? I mean, did he cry out? No, Nathan had to go to him and tell him. You're the man. You're the man. Thou art the man. But in all, all the other times, you'll find that David went to the Lord himself and cried out. Maybe that's part of why he was a man after God's own heart. Because he knew where to go to. He, he didn't run to the garrisons and the mighty weapons of, of the day. He, he trusted in the Lord to deliver them. And even in the battles that they had, he trusted in the Lord. I remember when he was waiting, he asked the Lord, which, should we go up? Even when he's fighting the Philistine. And he told him to go up one time. And then he told him to go wait by the mulberry trees, didn't he? And then he finally told him to go up in a different route. See, he was waiting on instructions from the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So he, he ran to the Lord. How many times do we try to do things in our own strength? And I know many of you have tried to do things in your own strength. And you know how it ended up, don't you? <laughs> It ended up in a mess. But did we learn from that? I hope so, yes. <laughs> Guess what? If you didn't, back in the wilderness. See, man, go back in the desert and you're going to learn again. So, and you think, and I know there's different situations too, and what's going to happen is, amen, well, I got this one. <laughs> it's just a little thing. You know, it's just a. Uh, it's just like Joshua and the Gideonites. You know, these, little, these people come and they said they was far away and, you know, and they had moldy bread. I see it, man. Their shoes are old and ragged and all this. And, and Joshua and the elders said, all right, we'll make a pack with you. We got this, Lord. <laughs> and then they come and find out they was just next heel over. They made, made a pact with somebody that was going to live right in their land that God said, I want you to have. And it ended up being a thorn in their flesh. And it ended up even hurting Saul because somewhere along life, King Saul killed a bunch of the uh, Gideonites that Joshua them had made a pact with, a covenant with, not to, for them to live. And so later on in King David's life, there was a three-year famine. Remember that? 
And David asked him, Lord, what, what's going on here? And he said, because Saul had killed the Gibeonites, amen, and they asked him what did they want to do, and he said, give us seven of Saul's descendants. And he gave him seven, and they hanged them, didn't they? Anybody remember that? Amen. So even after King Saul had been dead, amen, God still required of his family, and they, the Gideonites called his family the bloody house. <laughs> hmm. But the difference was that, see, King Saul didn't always run to God. He didn't run to God. He got ahead of God. He even sacrificed. Sacrifices. Supposed to be waiting on Samuel. And he went ahead and did it because the people was getting anxious. Yeah, right? So see, you're going to get in a mess when you go ahead and try to go ahead of God. That's why he says, wait on him. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Say, I don't have time. Yeah. You got time. If God didn't give you an answer yet, wait on the Lord. Wait on Him. Will He give you an answer sooner or later? He'll give you an answer, but you got to wait on Him. And it's hard when you you got to have patience, don't you? you got to have patience. So David waited on the Lord and run to the Lord and sought out the Lord and and if you don't believe me that, there's a bunch of other stories about people that did not run to the Lord. They ran away from the Lord. Anybody remember by a man by the name of Jonah? <laughs> Jonah ran away from the Lord when God told him exactly what to do. Did he do it? Hey Amen. Did he get in a mess? Yeah, he, he was running, thought he could run to Tarshish. Went down to Joppa, catch a ship. You know the story. Hey, Amen. And he ended up, man, <laughs> swallowed by a whale, right? I mean, how, how, how much more difficult can it get than that? <laughs> Be fish food. For three days, three nights, According to Jesus, Jonah was in the belly of the whale. <laughs> and scientists will tell you that's just physically impossible. But if you read Jonah, it tells us that God prepared a great fish. It was prepared for Jonah. It just happened to be a whale he prepared for. <laughs> Amen. So, and then he vomited him out, spit him out on the ground, didn't he? And then he had to go do it anyhow. <laughs> had to go do it anyhow. So, it's best, do not run from the Lord. Don't run from the Lord. Amen. It, you're going to be in a mess. Run to the Lord. So, Jonah ran from the Lord because God asked him to go preach. <laughs> Yeah, right? There's another man, the New Testament. He also abandoned the Lord. His name was Judas Iscariot. He was right there with the twelve, seeing the miracles for three and a half years and seeing the power of God. Now, I don't know what his mindset was. Maybe he thought he could force the Lord to get on the throne. I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't really say. But we do know this, that he, that he uh, betrayed the Lord for how many pieces of silver? 30 pieces of silver. You know what 30 pieces of silver was in the Old Testament? If a slave was accidentally killed, whoever accidentally killed your slave they had to give you 30 pieces of silver. Amen. That's the price that Judas got for betraying Jesus Christ. So he, he ran and left the Lord 
for money, we know. Nobody does that today, do they? <laughs> People still running from the call of God, and they're still running from God to get the mammon of the world. What is that? The wealth and riches of the world. And once, you, once they get that, even, and they may run after it and never get it, they never be satisfied. Never satisfied. I, I don't care what people are running after. If they know the Lord and they run after something else, it is a bad trade. It's a bad trade. Because it, it, it will never work. And, and some of you have experienced that in your life already. And the best path that we can, any of us can take is to remember what David, King David did most of his life. He ran after the Lord. Even when Paul was so persecuted and put in prison, right? Do you ever read anywhere where he turned to any other place for his strength and his hope? No, he always turned to the Lord. He always turned to the Lord for his strength and his hope. I mean, this man was beaten half to death, shipwrecked, he got a whole list of it. Starved almost, snake bit, we know. <laughs> How about that, Dave? Yeah. Might have been Weaver Holly. <laughs> And it was hanging on his arm. He shook it off in the fire. Try that, David. I think a bass on that. And the natives standing there watching him. Let's see, he's gonna die right now. <laughs> Just here in a minute. Kept watching him. He didn't die. <laughs> Why? They put his And they he went in and healed their Chieftain's child, or whoever it was. Amen? That's what God can do Amen. when you trust in the Lord. Paul didn't freak out. Run and grab a shovel. <laughs> Amen? Amen? He just dropped it. Amen? Amen? No, nah, you don't want to tempt the Lord the God, right? You don't want to tempt Him, that's right. Amen. But he does tell us in the book of Mark, poison, whatever, you know, it ain't going to hurt you. Paul took that literally, didn't he? <laughs> Amen. So, now I'm telling you, we ain't going to bring in no stakes either. I don't think we're... I, I seen one of them baskets while I was up there in, in uh, Pennsylvania, you know, them ones that look like they got that cobra inside. Cindy wanted to buy one of them, bring back with us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, set that up front here. Yeah. Watch people run out the door. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, amen. Just decoration, though, you know. So, amen. But, oh, Paul trusted God. He trusted him, man. See? I hope we can have that trust in God in every area of our life. That we'll... The first place we'll go. We won't, the first place, I mean, we feel sickness and pain. The first place we shouldn't go. We shouldn't run to the doctor first thing. We should run to the Lord first. Amen. Right? And then go to the doctor if you need to afterwards. Go to the Lord first. Amen? Uh, or financial, whatever it may be. It don't matter whatever the troubles is. There are all kinds of troubles that can go on and on. Amen? If you live life any time at all, you're going to experience trouble of all kinds. Take it to the Lord. Everybody in the Word of God that did that path ends up far better than all those that tried to do stuff on their own. You've got to know it. It's in there. I mean, read it. That, read the Old Testament. All those people. Amen. Over and over and over and over. Kings and kings and kings. 
This was a good king, and he did that which is good, pleasing unto God. Guess what? Hey, he had a good reign. This was an evil one. He did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. Guess what happened to him? He had a terrible reign. Over and over, it's just terrible. And a lot of times, their children followed after him. So see, this, this ain't nothing new. It's, it's right there. If people just read it and believe it and look at it. God blessed their life or he, he, he cursed their life. And it was, it was according to where they followed him and called out to him and trusted him. That's what he wants, isn't it? He wants us to trust him with every area of our life. Don't just trust him. Oh, I'll trust you, Lord. I'm going to church Sunday, and that's about it. No. Sunday night, and that's about it. Wednesday night, and that's all I give you, Lord. No. We've got to trust him with every area of our life. Every area of our life. Everything. Amen. Does he care about every area of our life? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. And uh, I mean, you can read over and over how God is plenty powerful enough to take care of any area of your life. These, hey, there's people who had leprosy. And he just healed them. If that's what he wants to do, he can do it. Every area. Amen? Every area. Diane, would you come to Pena, please? Trusting in the Lord. That's... I mean, you know, that's, I don't, I, I, who else, where a better place can you put your trust? You've got to put it in something. You, you can't put it in your bank account. Ask some of the nations overseas. They've already, some of the governments already seized 60% or 40% of their banking account, their savings, because they needed the money. You think they can't do that here? They can do that here. They'll do it here too. You think your money's safe because it's in a bank? You could wake up tomorrow morning and every bank in the country be sh shut down. You won't get in. Is that possible or not? Yeah, it's possible. Who are you going to trust in then? I'm going to trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Amen. What did they do? What did the government do to, in Venezuela? First, they took every gun they had. And then they just told them they couldn't do anything. They just had to do whatever they said then. Because they couldn't defend themselves. Amen. What are you going to do then? You're going to trust in the Lord. You got to trust in the Lord. That's what you got to do. I mean, you, just got, it's, you, don't, you don't have no choice. You can rise up and try to fight everybody if you want but you're going to have to trust in the Lord Amen I'm telling you uh, an AK-47 or whatever and two or three hundred rounds is not going to defeat the government <laughs> they have a lot more than that so you're going to have to trust in the Lord Amen now it'll help protect you from people, but it comes down to it, amen. Your greatest strength is Him. It's Him. Use wisdom, but your greatest strength is Him. Hopefully, you'll act like the old farmer <laughs> and use wisdom in these things, amen. Amen. All right, those who can, would you stand with us? If you need to come pray, come on, please. Come on. If you need pray, come on. Come on. Where, where do you really, really, really? Where, I mean, only you and the Lord knows. Where do you really put your trust? Where do you put your trust? Where do you put your trust? For your everyday living. Everyday living. And for your eternity. Your eternity. I mean, 
it's a no-brainer in eternity. Anybody else offer an eternal life that you know of? I don't know anybody else is offering eternal life. I don't know anybody else went to the grave and got back up. All the rest of them who got big followings, they're still in the grave. Right? Jesus is the only one got up. And at the right hand of God the Father, make intercession for you and I. Trust Him. Trust Him. Anybody need to come pray? Come on. You need to pray. Come on. Put your trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Saying, well, it ain't going like I, I believe it should be going. That's all right. Trust in the Lord, right? Because it's going like He knows it needs to be going. Trust in the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Those who wait on the Lord shall what? Renew their strength. Mount up on what? Wings as eagles. Amen. They'll run. Right? Not grow weary. Walk and not what? Faint. Something of that nature. Amen. I get it. I got them backwards, but you got the picture. Amen. If you trust and wait on the Lord, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Amen.